Hi everyone, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to paint pasta sky and pink roses and I am going to explain to you what I do uh, step by step. So grab your watercolor set, your paint brushes and let's jump right into it. I'm so sorry that I forgot to film the first part um, vertically. I think that's the right word. So uh, the first part is going to look a little bit tilted, but don't worry, this part I am just going to use my flat brush and paint the sky blue. If you're new to watercolor painting and wondering what color I'm using, I'm actually using the Himi Gouge Jelly 24 color set that I just bought a couple of days ago. And for the brushes, you don't need anything fancy if you only have one brush. That also works as I usually use just one brush for everything anyways. But usually for the sky, if you have a flat brush or if you want to invest in a brush, I think that the flat brush will be very convenient uh, to paint skies. Now I'm just mixing the blue color that is already in the set with a little bit of water. It's okay if you make it a little bit watery for this because you can layer it up as you go. And normally for this guy, I don't want the color to be too thick because it's going to be too difficult to spread it out. So as you can see, the texture is pretty thin and pretty easy to paint all over your piece of paper. Uh, I just want to say that I'm not an artist and I'm not definitely not a professional so I'm just painting as a hobby and I hope that you are too and if you are also painting as a hobby then let's get to know each other and I'm very happy to be here and paint with you today. Okay so we are done with the first blue sky layer. Since it's watercolor and we did the first layer very thin, so if you want to build it up, uh, I would highly recommend you to wait for it to dry before you add another layer. I was just a little bit too excited here, so I rushed to add another layer right away, which you can see is kind of get washed by the first layer, and it doesn't come out as smooth as I wanted it to be. So definitely if you do want to add another layer and make the color look thicker and more bold, then definitely wait for the first layer to dry. So uh, I decided that the first layer, the sky is over. So now we are going to jump right into the clouds layer. We are switching the brush to a kind of a round, a round brush with a tippy point. This is going to be the brush that I'm going to use for the rest of today's painting and also for majority of my paintings. So I highly recommend you to invest in um, a round brush with a tippy point. I'm not sure what it's called, but invest in one. It can be a little bit pricey to start with, but it's, it's gonna last for so long and you only have to buy it once. It's literally so convenient and thank God we are finally having the correct direction of the video now. So let's start mixing the colors for the clouds. So for the sky, I am going to use three colors, but the main color is going to be the baby pink in the color set. As you can see, I am taking it out of the, uh, the paint and put it in the palette. It's actually one of my favorite colors in this set and I use it all the time in most of my paintings. So three colors we're going to need, the baby pink color, the hot pink, which is like the deep, dark pink colors and you will also need some white so take them all out of your uh, pocket um, out of your color boxes and put it on your palette because you don't want to make your colors dirty as you paint 
Prepare the colors that you just took with a little bit of water so that you have a kind of like a melted ice cream texture but not as thick. Kind of like a little bit thicker than water. I feel like that's the right texture for this um, to paint the main parts of your paintings and then later on when we build it up. So I'm starting to paint the pink clouds with the baby pink color that I just mixed it up. Honestly, when painting clouds, don't be too stressed about getting the right shape or the right color because we are going to build it up to a lot of layers and you can fix things as you go. So don't worry about it too much and just have fun, I guess. As I continue to paint, when the brush gets dried, I usually dip it in a little bit of water and then um, start to dip in the colors after and continue to paint like that. Sometimes my brush can be a little bit too watery. Uh, that's why I always have the rag in my hand to uh, take out of the moisture whenever I need to. So I am still continuing to paint the first layer of the cloud. I hope that we are almost done with this layer because I'm literally running out of things to say. Okay, so I guess I'm done with this layer. I'm washing my brush with water and then I dry it with the rag that I have in my hand. Then I use the hot paint color to paint the second layer. Usually this is the part when I feel like I'm making a mess on my painting, but that's okay. That's the time when you need to be the most patient with yourself and just trust the process and trust your intuition and trust that it is going to get better if you take the time. I think that is one of the reasons that why I love painting when I was a kid, because I can just close the room and be with myself and be with my brushes for the whole day but I feel like if, as I get older my patients get worse and worse and somehow it was always harder for me to finish a painting because it does not look good when I'm in the process of it I feel like I'm messing it up and then I just want to give up but I have been trying harder and harder to trust the process as I go and be really patient with myself and really trust myself that, you know, things are going to get better if I don't give up. So we have the main big cloud right on the center of our painting. We are also going to paint the little clouds that scatter throughout the sky with the dark pink color. And then we're going to layer it up again with the light pink color, as you can see I'm doing right there. Here I am still working on the layers of the clouds, alternating between the darker colors and the lighter colors. At this point, if the painting doesn't look perfect or doesn't look right to you, then it's really okay. I literally feel this all the time. Like every time that I paint in the middle of the process, it always looks like a mess. So don't worry and have fun and please don't put pressure on yourself. We're all here to learn and we're trying to paint to relax ourselves, not to feel more pressure. Honestly, I was actually quite embarrassed for filming this video because this part, it doesn't look pretty. <laughs> but I decided to not give up. So if you're also here at this point and it doesn't look perfect, then don't give up for me. For the sake of all of us today, painting together. I am using the medium pink color to paint the scattered clouds 
on the sky, on the upper part of the sky. Next, I'm using white uh, to mix with a little bit of pink so that it's lighter but it's not too harsh. And I'm going to uh, highlight the top part of the cloud to kind of like separate the different junks of cloud so that they don't look like a super big cloud but like smaller clouds that are together if you know what I mean. So for the next couple of minutes I'm going to put some music over this and let you enjoy painting in silence with me because this process actually took me quite some time and I feel like there is much to explain to it anymore because I am basically just kept layering and layering until it looked good enough for me. So alternating between a darker pink, lighter pink, and very white pink until it looks like clouds to me. So keep painting with me and I will talk to you again in a couple of minutes. Okay, we are moving to the final steps of the clouds. I am just using white, complete white, to cover the top parts of the clouds to kind of highlight it. And I'm going to do this for all the clouds that I have in this painting, including the smaller ones and the bigger ones.
I feel like it's not super perfect and it's not like as pretty as I hoped it would be for the clouds, but it was fine and it's okay. So I am here just to keep using the white to not only add flavors but also trying to blend everything up and kind of add highlight and shadows for the clouds. The final layer of the cloud, I am using yellow to mix with white so that it's going to look like the sun ray, if that's the correct word that I'm using. But anyways, I'm going to use that bright light yellow color to add to the right part of the clouds to even put more texture on it and add more dimension on it. So here I'm just adding more highlights to the cloud and also try to blend it out as I go.
The final touches of the sky would be painting the white parts at the top and also highlighting some more of the clouds but we are not going to blend it this time and we will just leave the white paint as it is. I feel like I took a lot more time than I needed for this process. Um, you really don't need to spend that much time doing the clouds, but I tried my best to make it look as pretty as possible. And even though it's not perfect, I am pretty happy for this result. So give it some final touches and we will move right into the next part of the painting very soon. As you paint the white parts, uh, try to think of how the actual clouds look like in reality. They usually have different small pieces. Um, even though they look like they are a big cloud, they're actually combining of small pieces together and that is why I'm painting the top parts a little bit white to kind of separate everything. Separating the bigger jungle clouds to the smaller jungle clouds to kind of give it the feeling of having more layers. By the way, if you hear some kind of a mewing sound at the background, I'm so sorry, it's my cat, Mia. And uh, sometimes she likes to join me in this recording process. So here I'm just continuing to highlight the clouds until I felt satisfied enough with my work for the moment. Okay, so for the next layer, it's going to be the darkest layer of the branches. I'm using the color that I already have in my palette, but if you don't have it, you can mix the darkest green in your palette with a little bit of black and you will have the same result as I do. So we're going to paint the branches first to kind of give it kind of giving me the idea of where the branches will go and how I'm going to paint the leaves. Once I'm done with the branches, I'm going to start to uh, draw the leaves. If you're using a round brush like I'm using right here, it should be really easy to, for you to paint the leaf shape of the painting. But if you're using a different kind of brush, it's okay, but you should probably, um, I would highly recommend you to kind of have a sketch paper next to you to kind of play with your brush and see which direction of the brush would go the best for this process and which would make the most beautiful leaves out of your brush. So for the leaves of this part of the painting, I am painting 
a lot of leaves at the bottom of the branches and then some scattered pieces as I go to the top part of the branches. Now we're going to do the same thing for the second group of the branches and the leaves right under the first one that we just did. This is also going to be the left of the painting. And we are going to start the same process with painting the branches first and then adding the leaves, the second layer. For the bottom part of the painting, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to also paint the branches first and then the leaves, but I feel like for this part of the painting, I got a little bit impatient and the branches didn't look as good as the top ones. So if you're doing this at home with me for this part, uh, maybe take some more time to organize the branches and you know, be patient with the process instead of painting a lot of black branches like I did. We're not going to paint the blend for the whole bottom part of the painting, but rather we are going to divide it to three different groups. The first group will be on the left, which I am painting right now, and then I will paint two other groups at the middle and the right part of the painting.
I'm now moving to paint the second layer of the leaves. I'm using the color that I already have in the palette again, but if you don't, then just use the darkest green you have in your color set and do not mix it with any black color. Just use the plain dark green color. Since this is a small painting, so I'm not going into details of how the leaves are going to look or how the highlights and shadows are going to be, but rather I'm just adding some layers to the leaves by painting the dark green color over the pieces of branches that I just did. For the third layer of the leaves and also going to be the last layer of green we're going to do, I'm using a lighter green color. As you can see, it's right there, but if you don't have the color like I do in your palette, you can mix a little bit of the medium green with yellow. For the last layer and also the lightest layer of the leaves, it's best to not overdo it. So as you paint, be really patient and go slow. And take a little bit of a look at your painting to see how this new layer works and where do you think you should add more um, lighter green into your leaves. Okay, we're finally moving to the last process of the painting, which is painting the pink flowers. I'm using the hot pink color that I already have in my palette. I took it at the beginning of the painting, but um, anyways, it's the, also the hot pink color in the palette and you don't have to mix it with any other color. I am just using this color to paint little dots on the branches and I tried to make a variations of the flowers by painting it in different size 
There are big ones, medium ones, and tiny ones. And then after finishing the first group of the blends, I go ahead and do the same thing for the other part of the fringes. I feel like this could be good as it already is, but if you want to add more dimension to the flowers, you can use the lighter pink color, kind of the same pink color that we did for the cloud earlier. And I use them to draw a little bit of highlight on the dark pink flower. We're not painting any new flowers here and rather just focusing on highlighting the flowers that we just did earlier. Finally, I'm using white to highlight the last and the top parts of the flowers and the branches. My brush was actually a little bit too wet and that's why you see that the branch looks a little bit too thick. It was a little bit much, so be careful with how wet your brush is and make sure that it is, it has a decent amount of water and not too much water on it. I kind of made a little bit of a mess and I am trying to clean the big white part of the painting that I just messed up by dotting it with my finger and with the rag. When I was finished with the white highlight of the branches, I went ahead and continued to use more white to paint little white dots next to the flowers while also adding more highlight to the pink flowers that we did earlier.
So we're moving to paint the little moon on the sky. For this process, make sure that your brush is not too wet uh, because it's going to ruin the shape of the moon. Now I'm starting to paint the white dots on the sky to give it a look of the stars. After I'm done with the big stars, I take another brush and I kind of tap my white brush onto that to give it more of a scattered, tiny little white dot stars on the paper. Now using the same white color that we've been doing for the past few minutes, I'm adding more white dots onto the painting, some of them really close to the branches and the flowers to kind of give it a little special effect. You can honestly just finish the paintings here and leave it as it is, but if you want to have fun, as I see a lot of people do this and it looks so aesthetic, so I'm just painting some more flowers and a little bit more leaves on the white parts of the paper. And now I'm adding some pink dots and some green dots uh, on the painting and then layering it with a lighter pink color and some white color on the roses flowers. 
just as the same process as we did for the other flowers in the painting. Okay, so we are finally finished with the painting for today. I hope that you had a lot of fun painting with me, and I hope that you learned something new in your painting skill today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you soon. Bye!